Hi, I am Pastor Richard Warnicke from Christ Lutheran Church in Pewaukee, and welcome to our Thursday devotion, our Ascension devotion. Forty days after Jesus' resurrection, he was ready to return to his heavenly Father in heaven. He spent time with his disciples before he left, explaining to them exactly what he would want them to do. Wouldn't you know, they asked him a question. When are you going to restore your kingdom, the kingdom of Israel in this world? They thoroughly thought he was truly the Messiah, the one handpicked by God to be their Lord, their King, and their Savior. But they were wrong in thinking that Jesus' kingdom was of this world. Jesus said, it's not the time to talk about that, but I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, and he's going to empower you to be my witnesses. Wait for him. And then Luke records for us in Acts chapter 1, reading verses 9 through 11, he writes these words. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. They are watching intently as Jesus leaves, watching him rise to heaven. And they couldn't drop their eyes. Two angels come and ask, why are you continuing to stare? Don't you realize that Jesus will return? But it's like, when a guest or a family member leaves after visiting us for a period of time, and we continue to watch after them as they go, thinking to ourselves, are they coming back? Will we ever see them again? I'm going to miss them so much. And I'm sure the disciples were thinking about these things. It's Paul who writes in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 19 through 23, that Jesus, even though he left them to be exalted again, to take his full glory back and rule at God's right side, he never left us. He never went into retirement. He continues to do what? Listen to what Paul says. He writes, starting at verse 19, the last part, that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in this present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. The Apostle Paul reminds us, Jesus' modern-day disciples, that Jesus, even though he ascended into heaven, he continues to do many things yet for us today. He is actively involved in our life. And what he is he doing? He is ruling. He is the ruler of rulers. He rules over all authority in this world. Nothing can rule, nothing can order, nothing can have an impact on our life without him in command. And then he takes it a step farther. He says Jesus rules all things for his church. The church are those people who have been called out of darkness into his wonderful light. Those who believe that Jesus is their Lord and Savior. In other words, Jesus is ruling everything for you and me. What a tremendous joy, as the Apostle Paul also writes in Romans 8, God causes all things to work out for the good of those who put their trust in him. That's the joy that you and I have. Even bad things that happen in our life, as we pray in the Lord's Prayer, or as Jesus taught us, deliver us from evil when bad things happen, make it work out for our good. What a joy that Jesus gives us this promise. And then the Apostle Paul reminds us that he continues to be our head. And as our head watches over our body, providing, feeding, taking care of, offering security, Jesus continues to be our head yet today. And the one that I find most comforting is that even though 
Jesus fills all things in every way, yet he feels as if he is incomplete. He is incomplete without us, without us being with him. And he is not going to stop. He is not going to rest until he brings us home, all whom he has called out of darkness into his wonderful light. Jesus is never going to give up on us. He didn't leave us. He didn't abandon us. He continues to rule all things for our good. And that power, it fills us. And he rejoices in the day that he will be able to come and take us home. He continues to be our prophet who speaks to us the truth of God's word. He continues to be our priest who intercedes for us asking God to forgive us, bringing our prayers to God, and God hears them. He's a great mediator. But he continues to be our king, ruling all things for our good, until one day he'll bring us home. We are never alone. He would never leave us or abandon us. And this is his promise. This is our ascension hope. We pray. Ascended Lord, your work on earth is done. Your ascension to heaven proves that. Salvation is complete for me and for all. I praise you for your greatness as true God and Savior. And still you continue to serve me and all your people by ruling over all things for the good of your church. You are preparing a place for all of us by your side in heaven's happiness. May that good news fill us with comfort and encouragement today and always. Amen. Rejoice in our Lord's ascension and God's blessings as we live in that hope. One day we will live with him eternally. Until next time.